Hello everyone and welcome back to Mossy Bottom on this glorious March day. You can probably hear my rooster crowing in the background, the birds are singing, it really is lovely. This video is all about mushroom cultivation. And you may remember back in the autumn of 2018, I made a video in which um, I wandered the forest hunting for and trying to identify wild varieties of mushroom, as well as harvesting a few and eating them as well. Well, my mushroomy know-how has improved quite a bit since then, um, and I do plan on making another foraging video uh, in the near future, maybe this autumn, uh, because it's fast becoming one of my favorite things to do. But um, as it's spring right now, um, and in the spirit of self-sufficiency, which is obviously a huge part of my life, I'm going to attempt to grow my own mushrooms. Now, I should say, I've never done this before, um, so this video will be um, very much uh, a case of putting the theory into practice for the first time and seeing if it works. But I hope that by the end of this video, um, anyone out there watching who wants to have a go at growing mushrooms themselves um, will be armed, I suppose, with enough knowledge um, to give it a go to. So here we have some scarlet elf caps, which is one of the few varieties of mushroom or fungi that's actually still growing um, at this time of year on my little patch of land. Um, later in the year, especially in the autumn around September, October, there's a whole host of different varieties of fungi here. And mycology, which is the given name to the study of fungi, um, is a fascinating subject with a huge amount to learn, but I'm gonna to attempt to distill it into the need to know facts for the purposes of mushroom cultivation. Well, first of all, mushrooms are not actually plants. In fact, uh, they're more closely related to us, to people, than they are to plants. There are three main types of mushroom, parasitic, symbiotic, and saprobic. The latter being the type we're most interested in um, because those are the mushrooms which, like the scarlet elf caps, grow on dead organic matter, like leaf litter, manure, and tree logs. And that's what I'll be using here at Mossy Bottom to grow my own mushrooms. Now they break down that organic matter with the aid of moisture and turn it into food. So unlike plants, they don't photosynthesize, which means they aren't dependent on the sun for energy. And that's why most commonly you find mushrooms in dark, shady places like this. And what could be better to grow in Highland than something that doesn't need much sun and likes damp, wet places? Our damp, overcast climate might not be well suited to growing, you know, heat-loving crops, but as far as fungi are concerned, the Emerald Isle is like a five-star hotel. Another thing you need to know about mushrooms is that the mushroom itself is the fruiting body of the fungus. And that fungus is a network of fibers called mycelium. And if I pick this mushroom here, um, that's, the, that's the fruit of the mycelium. The network of fibers, the fungus itself, is within the log, breaking it down. So harvesting a mushroom is kind of like picking an apple from a tree, except unlike a tree, you can't see all the branches and leaves of the fungus because they're hidden within the organic matter as they break it down. What that also means is that if you pick a mushroom in the right way without damaging the rest of the fungus, more mushrooms will keep growing back season after season, just like apples would on a tree. Finally, unlike plants, mushrooms don't produce seeds. They actually produce spores instead. And unlike seeds, spores can't easily be harvested by the amateur mushroom grower like me. It is possible, but it's quite a complicated scientific process. So it's better, I think, to buy pre-mixed spawn from a professional grower, which combines the spores and a basic substrate like sawdust. Now I know in the US, um, there's a burgeoning movement of home mushroom growers, and it seems to be quite easy from the research I've done to get hold of mushroom spawn. In the UK and Ireland, it's a bit trickier. Um, there are suppliers out there, but you might have to get the spawn uh, shipped from another country within Europe, which is definitely possible. If you're struggling to find a supplier, just try searching on eBay, they're definitely out there. And in case you're wondering, 
I'm sure everyone in this part of the world will have seen scarlet elf caps in the wild. Yes, they are actually edible. You're supposed to cook them first, and I've never tried it, but uh, maybe one day. So today I'll be inoculating logs, and I have one here. Oh, very heavy. This is a piece of oak with spawn from two different types of mushroom. The shiitake mushroom, which is native to Southeast Asia, uh, but said to be one of the easiest mushrooms to cultivate and the oyster mushroom, which is native to both Europe and to North America. And as well as logs, you can also grow oyster mushrooms on straw bales and bags of sawdust. Right, enough theory, let's get started. So these are the logs I've harvested, each about a meter long from three different species of tree. And you may notice these ones on the end look a bit strange, well, that's because I've already inoculated them. And that's the process I'm going to show you in this video. But I needed to get a bit of practice in first um, to make sure I knew what I was talking about before filming. So that's why they've already been done. And the three uh, species of tree that I have here are sycamore on the end, which is a member of the maple family, European ash in the middle, and English oak at the far end. Now, mushrooms in general will only grow on hardwood logs. So you can't use conifer trees. Pine, spruce, cedar, anything evergreen um, and fast growing just isn't going to work, sadly. In terms of which species of broadleaf tree uh, to use, it depends very much on the mushroom. So the shiitake mushrooms, they prefer oak. And the oyster mushroom seems to favor maple, from what I've read. Um, there are no maple trees growing on my land, sadly, so I had to go with sycamore, which, as I say, is, is closely related, so fingers crossed it will work. I've also read that ash works really well, uh, and it's quite abundant here, so I decided in the spirit of trial and error uh, to give that a go too. Um, other species which I've read um, can work well are birch, um, aspen, and uh, cherry but I suspect uh, you'd have some success with most hardwood species. Uh, it probably just affects um, how long they last in terms of getting the perfect one. The most important thing to remember is that you have to use living wood. You can't, sadly, just collect dead branches from the forest floor. It would make it easier, wouldn't it? But the main reason you can't do that is that dead timber will have already been colonized by other species of fungi, which are likely to then um, to outcompete and harm anything that you're trying to grow. So you need to harvest branches from living trees, cut them into lengths about a meter long, then clean off any lichen, moss, um, or any other microorganisms on the bark using water. And then you need to let them rest in a dark, moist place. Uh, mine were lying on the ground here, wrapped in a tarp um, for about two weeks. And that rest period, it's really important. It allows the antifungal cells in the wood to die off. Now, the best time to do this is in the winter, before the buds start to grow. I harvested my logs back in February. Um, it's now late March, um, but if you're really quick, it should still work this year. You're gonna have to get your skates on though. So we need to inoculate the logs. Um, and I have a piece of ash right here. Uh, with the spawn. And this is the spawn for my two different types of mushroom. I'll show you this in much more detail a bit later. First though, we need to drill holes uh, into the log. Um, and for that you will need a drill, obviously with a, a half inch drill bit, which is about 12 or 13 millimeters, I think. Um, and you're going to have to drill holes um, at a depth of about two and a half centimeters or about an inch. Um, so I've marked on my drill bit with a piece of white tape um, at the appropriate depth um, just to make it easier to see um, when I've reached that depth because you don't want to go any deeper for the simple reason that um, you don't want any air gaps in the holes. In terms of spacing, you want a gap of about six inches or 15 centimeters between the holes and about two inches or five centimeters between each row, something like this.
Now, what I've done, and this is very much an experiment, uh, is create sawdust from some of the logs. Here we have some oak sawdust, which I'm going to be using for the shiitake mushrooms. And it should be really easy for the mushroom spores to colonize this stuff, um, to act as a kind of fertilizer, I guess, uh, to help get them started. So what I'm going to do next is half fill each hole that I've now drilled in the log, and you drill all the way around the log uh, with my sawdust, packed in as tightly as I can, because what you don't want is any air gaps. And now for the fun bit, we get to add the spawn, filling each hole right to the very surface of the bark uh, with as much as we can fit in. And I'm going to show you this spawn. Um, it comes in different types. Sometimes it's mixed with sawdust. Sometimes it's in a dowel. Uh, and you can see this variety is just very, very, very tiny little beads. And you can actually see that white stuff uh, is the fungi itself beginning to grow which is perfect. And you can get special inoculating tools, um, which are kind of like syringes, which make this job a little bit quicker and more efficient. If you've got lots of logs to do, um, I haven't even attempted to look at where you buy one. I just read about them in a book. Um, for my purposes though, I think just using my fingers is probably the best way. Now at this stage, it's really important that you seal those holes to prevent the spawn um, that you've pushed in from being damaged, or indeed from your freshly cut holes being colonized uh, by some other species of uh, microorganism. All the books recommend using cheese wax for this purpose, uh, but cheese wax is not the easiest thing to get hold of around here. I'm not entirely sure where you're supposed to buy it from. Uh, so I went with option number two, which was beeswax. And the easiest way to procure beeswax here in Ireland uh, is to buy these altar candles, which are actually really cheap. Um, and you can find them in supermarkets and I suspect hardware stores. I just got these in my local supermarket. And I'm gonna use an old kettle to melt them down. Um, and once melted, it's just a case of cutting up a piece of sponge and using it to add the liquid wax onto the outside of the hole. Do it a couple of times to make sure that it's fully sealed. And as you can probably see, the wax sets pretty quickly. Um, within a few seconds, it's solid and you can touch it. In fact, one of the slight problems with this method is that the beeswax uh, keeps hardening again in the pan. So you only have a short amount of time um, before you have to go and melt it again. You also want to seal the top and bottom of the log with the wax um, and any wounds that were made when you were processing the logs, such as by the chainsaw, um, just to prevent other types of fungi from getting in. Now I'm going to inoculate about 20 logs like this in total. Um, and as you can imagine, it's quite a time consuming business. Um, expect each log to take about an hour in total to process. 
Um, but you can, of course, buy spawn in much smaller quantities. You don't have to buy as much as I did, um, and you don't have to do as many logs as I am. Just one or two logs uh, should still give you a sizable mushroom harvest. Once complete, your log should look something like this. You can see each hole has been filled with spawn and sealed up with wax. And finally, you need to stack your logs somewhere. And the best place to do that is under a tree cover in a shady but not pitch black location, uh, which is fairly damp, just the sort of place you would find mushrooms growing in the wild. Um, under conifer trees um, is actually perfect, but in my case, I'm gonna put them here at the back of my cabin uh, under this vast sycamore tree. Now I've read it can take between six months to two years for the logs to yield their first harvest of mushrooms. But after that, they can produce up to six harvests a year uh, for between two and eight years, depending on the species of tree which the logs were cut from. Some decaying much quicker than others. If you grow in shiitake mushrooms uh, and you can find oak logs, which are of course the best uh, for that species of mushroom, then they're gonna be yielding for a long time for very, very little work. Of course, this is my first time growing mushrooms, so I hope I've done everything right uh, and they produce a good harvest. Um, there's probably some mushroom growing experts watching this video thinking, my God, why did you do it like that? Um, but I have read a few books on the subject. I'm pretty confident I'm gonna get a yield. Quite how much remains to be seen um, based on the species of, of timber, I think. In terms of waiting, I'm generally quite a patient person, so I think it'll be quite fun checking in on them from time to time every few months to see if there's any progress, um, so I don't mind that too much. As you probably know, producing as much food as I can from my small plot of land here in the west of Ireland uh, is a big part of my life here. Um, and like most smallholders, I have shady patches everywhere, under trees like here and along my boundaries in particular, uh, which I'm now hoping are going to be the perfect habitat for mushroom farming. Uh, not only that, but um, the stacked logs here will provide a uh, great habitat for birds and insects, of course, uh, as well as other species of wildlife. So it's a win-win situation. I'm really trying to encourage as much biodiversity here as I can, as long as none of them decide to start nibbling on my mushrooms. <laughs> okay, folks, that's just about it for this video. Um, I promise to update you as and when they start to grow. Uh, yes, I said when, not if. I'm trying to be confident here. Uh, and if you're interested in seeing more mushroom-related videos, then do let me know in the comments, as um, next year I'm kind of hoping to set up uh, mushroom-growing sites with compost and straw bales uh, using some different species of mushroom. I have to say, it really is very exciting to be growing something so perfectly suited to the damp, cool climate here in the west of Ireland. Bye for now.